This is session number five of the podcast engineering show. Right, Barry? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Hit it. (laughs) I don't know why it cracks me up when I say hit it. It's so, it's kind of lame, but anyway, welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Chris Curran, and this is the podcast engineering show. This is session number five already. Can you believe that? Uh, Every week, we bring you podcast production techniques on a silver platter. We have great guests who take us through their workflow, their equipment, and the challenges they've faced and what they've done to overcome them. We get down and dirty and talk shop. That's what this show is all about with podcast producers, engineers, and other specialists. I have a background in audio engineering in the music business. And about four years ago, I entered podcasting and I really noticed a huge lack of audio skills in the podcasting world. And that's where this show, I hope, can help. And if you implement the best of what you learn on this show, the best, (laughs) uh, your podcast will sound a lot better and you'll spend a lot less time producing them. And, uh, and of course I have Barry with me here. He's used to be the maintenance guy in the building and Barry, do you want to, um, (laughs) see, I have these sound clips of Barry and I have to craft a question to fit the answer. That's always hard to do. You know what, David, you're on here now. Ask, ask a question that the answer would be no. Ask me a question or ask Barry a question. (laughs) See, it's hard, dude. (laughs) Barry, should we, should we not? Well, I just just keep thinking about Barry White. Oh, really? And here's, here's my question for Barry White. Maybe it's the same Barry. It's not Barry White, by the way. Oh, it's not? No, it's Barry the maintenance guy. (laughs) Well, see, the question I would ask Barry White would be, have you ever written a song that's not about love? Oh, wait, I had had the fader down. Hold on, hold on. My soundboard. All right, ask it again. Sorry, David. <laughs> so let me ask. This is this is a question for Barry the Maintenance Guy. Barry the Maintenance Guy has Barry White ever written a song that's not about love? No way. <laughs> right. Go. See, nope. we knew that. Right. Thanks for the verification, though. I think we know that. This show is brought to you by two of my companies. The first one is Podcast Engineering School which offers online training for you wherever you are in the podcasting world. If you're brand new, we can help you launch your podcast. If you're a podcaster already, we can teach you audio engineering skills to enhance your sound. And we're starting to actually train people to have a career as a podcast producer because there are jobs available now. There's job postings that I see online. So website podcastengineeringschool.com. And of course, Fractal Recording, that's my production company. I produce podcasts at the highest quality for companies, authors, and podcast networks. Still can't announce my big client, but hopefully soon. (laughs) Anyway, fractalrecording.com. And you can obviously listen to this show and subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher and TuneIn Radio and the website, podcastengineeringschool.com. The school is the website and the school and the show are all on one website. so. So this is great. Our guest today is David Hooper. And you already heard his voice. He already asked Barry a question. <laughs> but David is the host of Red Podcast. And I want to. we're going to find out what that is. And he also, uh, his company is called 23 Hours. Right, David? That's the blog. Yeah, 23hours.com. Oh, that's your blog. I thought it was your company. Well, the, the <laughs> I'm, I'm in between companies right now. You're... you're <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. We're gonna watch sausage get get made here. Yeah, I just uh, I've been in the music business for for about twenty years, and recently, as in like last month, dropped that to work full time with entrepreneurs. And musicmarketing dot com was my old company, and, and the new company doesn't really have a name. I hadn't thought about it though. But Chris, you you get me on top of things, and uh, gotta add that to the list now. <laughs> All right, so let's start. If you listened to this show before, which you should go listen to the first four episodes, they're really awesome. Uh, we start with the speed round because I really don't like starting shows. Uh, so tell us about your childhood and how you got involved in the <laughs> right. So the speed round, um, David, tell us what shows you produce and engineer yourself personally. Red Podcast, the marketing podcast for influencers. Okay. That's it. Oh, okay. So, and you host the show and you produce the whole thing yourself, right? I'm the host, correct. I, I'm, I'm the everything, everything about it. Booking you, the guest, doing the editing, right? You are the everything. I love it. Hey, isn't that a Barry I'm, I'm, White song? I'm the guy. <laughs> isn't that a Barry White song? You are my everything. <laughs> it should be. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. This episode is awesome already. All right. So the website is redpodcast.com. So go to the website and uh, subscribe to David's podcast. And I like you have a tab on the website here, redpodcast.com. There's a tab called Equipment I Use. And this is just awesome because this is a lot of what uh, or some of what we're going to talk about today. I want to get into the okay. equipment you use. But first, let's finish the speed round. There's only two questions in the speed round now. Well, it used to, well, really, there's three, but sometimes I have to chop the last one because the person will answer the guest will answer it in the number two the second question so (laughs) tell us your workflow overview your workflow from when you're ready to record an episode all the way up through editing right before you're about to publish it get in the studio turn everything on start talking i talk off of an outline and because of talking over an outline and just kind of making it up as i go it's not a scripted show I usually end up with about 50% more than I need. For example, 30 minutes of tape ends up, when I edit it, down to 20 good minutes. So I go in and edit it. And everything's recorded, by the way, in Audacity. Okay. I don't know if you want me to get that detail. Absolutely. Okay. Edit it down, put it in. uh, I I record into a Dell, and I don't even know what kind of Dell it is. It's something they just, they sent me. They wanted me to blog about it. Oh, wow. looks like a MacBook Pro. Okay. So I take it off the Dell. I'm not a PC guy, but I just wanted a computer for my studio and already had one, so I didn't need to buy another one. Right. Put it on a Macintosh, and, and that's where I edit it, also in Audacity. And oh. uh, we got what we call a donut, and basically just put the, uh, wrap something around the content that I've got, take out all the ums, the ahs, the mistakes that I make, export that into a WAV file. I don't do any kind of compression. I've got a, a compressor here that I'm talking through right now. Actually, it's a uh, Behringer something or another. Okay. It goes through a Behringer, and I, I don't do any kind of compression on my voice. It's, uh, it's got a gate, so you can't hear me, hear me breathe or anything. Okay. And uh, after I edit everything down and has the donut around it, the uh, theme song, I guess you'll call it, and the outro and any kind of uh, bleeps or, or things that I use when I say something that I don't want to violate the clean rule on iTunes. <laughs> Take it into a program called Alphonic, and Alphonic cleans it up a little bit more than I upload it to the host. So keep it fairly simple. Right? Okay. Yeah. And just for those listening who don't know what a donut is, it's basically uh, like a, almost like an audio template where the the intro is already there in the beginning and the outro is already there in the end. And and David, you're just sticking your episode right in the middle and tightening it up. So it's right. nice. Yeah. Right. And um, so what what media host do you use, by the way? Lipson. Oh, you do use Lipson. Okay, yeah. What what I do, I do too. I, I upload to Lipson, and because I wanted to go with iHeartRadio, and that's really just we can get into this if you want to. That that's really just to say I'm on iHeartRadio for sponsors and things. Uh, Spreaker for that. Spreaker has an exclusive deal with Lipson, so it goes to two places. But Lipson is the primary host. Oh, so Spreaker. If you upload it there, you'll show up in iHeartRadio. You can. Yeah, you can. It's, I mean, you have to be approved. They're not going to just approve everything because it has to be licensed. Like they're not going to do anything that's like non-licensed music because it's owned by, uh, it used to be called Clear Channel. It's called iHeartMedia now. Okay. But yes, but so Spreaker will get you through iHeart. So it gives you another distribution point. I wonder if you have, if you upload it to Spreaker like that and you get approved to go to iHeartRadio, do they not allow you to have any copywritten music in your podcast or do they or do yeah, you all the music has to be licensed because it's a, a radio broadcasting company their license is going to be different than other people's license or a lot of people just don't have a license right but if you use like a van halen song can you tell spreaker and iHeartRadio, hey there's a van halen song in this episode and then that's okay or you just can't use no. copyright yeah Mm-mm. you can yeah yeah they, they're not gonna they're, they they would not allow you to to publish it. Got it. Yeah, I'm, and that's that. I mean, you, you might be able to get away with it without letting them know. Right. But once oh, it's approved, they, they were very, very specific on that. Another thing I had to do is I had to show that I had the rights to the theme that I used before iHeart would approve me. Oh, wow. Like I had to show the, the documentation saying that we had a license to actually use that song. Right. Did you buy it royalty free or something? Yeah, it's royalty free because I, I didn't want to. I mean, th- that's actually the business that I come from. 
of right. uh, collecting royalties, hopefully more than paying them. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's it's a it's a huge mess to to worry with that. So it's much better to get like a royalty free where you just pay one licensing fee and don't have to worry about paying off the what we call performance royalties every time it's it's spun. Right. All right. So now we, we are. That was this is the speed round <laughs> still, but but I I interjected. Uh, let's. I want to ask you about the hardware. That's actually the third question of the speed round. Um, so okay. you said you go to your studio and you sit down. And you record. Well, wh- where's your studio? In your home or office? Uh, it's it's in a walk-in closet. Oh, Just cool! Took a took a closet that probably is about I don't know, maybe ten by four, so about forty square feet. And basically just soundproofed the thing. Not not really soundproofed. We, we call it sound treated. Right. So it's a little more dead. Uh, packed it with a bunch of blankets, a bunch of um, can't remember the brand of the, of the foam. And, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's the studio. That's all. Awesome. Love it. Really love it. And what kind of mic do you use? Well, I'm talking into ATR 2100 right now. And I just realized when I asked you that, I'm, I, I have the webpage open here and I that there it is. The picture of the ATR 2100. ATR 20. And I'll, I'll tell you why I did that. We were going to go with, I've, I've got a broadcast radio show as well, but I'm not the producer or engineer on that. And, like a lot of radio people, RE20 by Electro Voice is the mic that we use. Right. And I thought about when I was building what I call the Red Room, my studio, I thought, well, why don't I go with RE20? I know how to use it. 10 years experience of using it. It's a great mic. I mean, Limbaugh uses it, right? Everybody in radio uses this thing. Why not go with a proven formula and something that you know? But then I thought about it because so many podcasters are listening to my podcast and I'm, I'm proud that this is a podcast. It's not a radio show. I'd heard so many great things about the ATR 2100. And I, I was like, you know, it's 50 bucks, one-tenth the price. So let me see how far I can push this thing. And it's been a great mic so far. It's been great. I'm, I'm thinking about moving up to the, the next, the new, I guess it's, I think it's called a BP40. It's another uh, Audio-Technica mic. But mm. for now, you know, 50 bucks sounds great. Yeah, it really does. Um it, it's nice. Uh, so then your mic, pl- how do you get the mic into the computer? By the way, when you host your show, it's just you. You don't have a co-host, right? Uh, not anymore. Yeah, started out as, as a co-hosted show. Okay. But after after 150 episodes, decided to just go go solo. Wow. And when you had a co-host, uh, your co-host was not in the room with you in the closet, right? Uh, yeah, in the closet. Yeah. Really? Yeah, the, the co-host was my wife. Oh! So- it's it's very easy when you're living <laughs> in the same house. Nice and uh, yeah, just be like, hey, let's uh, let's get in the red room and, and and do this thing. Yeah, that's awesome. And then how do you do? You have an audio interface or a mixer? How do you get the mic into the mics into the computer? Both. So so it goes. Uh, mic goes through a uh, some kind of Mackie. Uh, I mean, you you've got it right in front. Oh of yeah, you. You, you know my equipment better than I know it. Yeah, yep, I've got a, a, Mac, a Mackie mixer. <laughs> yep, Mackie mixer and. The Mackie mixer, I call it an effects loop. There's a technical name for it. I'm insert? Just using the musician term, but I'm sorry? Is it, I think it's an insert. I think something like that, where it's like a loop. It goes out of the mixer in, into the compressor, goes back into the mixer. Right. That's the way I understand it. It goes out of the mixer into a USB interface. And again, I went super cheap on that. It's got a $50 Lexicon Alpha and uh, straight into the Dell that they sent me for free. Uh, okay. Very good. And what's on the insert? Again, that's called an insert, by the way. When you when when you send the signal out from a mixer and you process it right. a little, and then you bring it back. What what's on the insert? A compressor. Yeah, it's a compressor, and there's a noise gate on it, so you can't hear me breathe. It's a, a Behringer, Behringer. Let's see, MDX forty something. I can't see it from here. Okay. MDX forty six hundred. Okay, is that the one Cliff Ravenscraft uh, suggests? Probably so. I mean, this is another one of those things that is super common. Seems like a lot of people we use them down at the station, and that's why I got it. Oh, okay. That it's it's the uh, four. I guess it's got four channels. Right. It's got a, a compressor, a gate. I think it's got a limiter on it. I, I don't really understand it. I, I just I asked my audio engineering buddies. I said, "All right, what's going to keep me from breathing <laughs> uh, w- with with the gate or the sound of the breath?" Right. And uh, they told me how to set it up. So. Right, yeah. Using a gate is 
when you're recording is sometimes a little tricky because you don't if you don't have it set up right, you can actually gate the sound. You can cut out some of your some of your words or or even right. M- more likely is you cut out half of a breath. So it right. just that's exactly right. Yeah, it just sounds weird sometimes. It can if you yeah, don't have if, it set if, right. If you crank it up too much, and that that's kind of been the issue when I've got guests in here with the red room. Some people are heavier breathers that they don't have that mic technique. So you've got to reset it. I don't know that I would use it if it would just for me. Right. But it is nice to have. It certainly makes editing easier. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you got your mic going through the, the Mackie mixer. It's going through an insert, coming back to the mixer. Then it goes out and into your Dell and you record it in, I think you said audition? Audacity. Audacity. Right. Good program. Free program. Right. And, and exactly why I wanted to do it that way. I knew that people were going to be, because of what we're teaching, not necessarily about podcasting. We don't work with that, but, but Red is about building your influence and, and using your personality and getting it out there however you can. It's books, it's speaking, it's also media, such as podcasting, but just a, a low barrier to entry. I've, I've loved Audacity. I actually had an interface that only used Pro Tools. I had to switch over to something that could use Audacity. Right. And then in, in Audacity, that's where you edit the whole thing. Right. Yeah, and, and that's the great thing about Audacity is, uh, again, I'm, I'm recording on a Dell, a PC. I can take the file. I can move it over to Audacity and the Macintosh. Super easy. No problems. Goes back and forth flawlessly. Oh, okay. So you record the Audacity file on a PC, and you can take the exact right. same project file onto a Mac, and it opens perfectly. Right. Yep. That is pretty cool. Yeah, I really don't know much about a PC. And that's the reason that I had this computer just kind of sitting around. They sent this thing to me. I fired it up once. I didn't... It's, it's like if, if it had been a Macintosh, I would have used it, would have really appreciated it. But it, it sat around for a couple of years because I, I, don't, I don't know a thing about PCs. But I do know about Audacity from the Macintosh. So fortunately, it, it's more or less the same thing. Okay. And what's your philosophy on editing? I know you said typically, let's if you talk for thirty minutes, you cut it down to twenty. Yeah, that that shows more of my skills as a host, though, more than a philosophy. That's just I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> so, are you like crazy about editing, or what is your philosophy? Well, the philosophy comes from more or less a marketing background. Uh, I've done. Um, I've been involved in the film and television industry, worked with a lot of comics. And one of the things I've learned from the comics that I've worked with is that if you've got a three minute set, you want to pack as many jokes in there as you possibly can. And you get to the next joke more quickly by having a really tight set. My friend Rick Roberts, he tells me, write tight, write tight, no filler. And I believe the same way with radio, with podcasting, with a book, working on a book now, use this philosophy. The quicker you can get to the content and the next piece of content, the better experience the listener has. So it's a tight edit. I'm not somebody who just gets in there and does ums and ahs, but that's certainly part of it. Okay. And then, okay, after it's all edited, then you make it an MP3 right in Audacity, right? Well, I I take it down to a wave. Okay. In Audacity. And then I upload it to Alphonic after everything is edited. And Alphonic takes it to, I I think it's a 112 mono file. That okay. I export it as, and it has some other uh, studio trickery that makes it sound a little bit better, compression or l- limiting, you know, and l- levelizing, making sure the music and everything is good. Yeah, Alphonic is a is a nice tool. Uh, we were talking about it last episode as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's made things really easy for me. Like I used to get in there and I used to cut out some noise, maybe put in uh, compression or some kind of bass boost, or try to make my voice sound a little bit better. But Alphonic, more or less, I think it does all that. Right, and you go down to 112 mono, you said, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mono... I Yeah, I wanted a small file that sounds pretty good, but make it easily accessible. Yeah, and it's funny, because obviously a podcast is mo- mostly voices and speaking, so there's really no need for stereo, uh, except, right. of course, for the intro music and the outro and, you know... Right. Um, Barry, if your voice was a stereo voice, would you want it crushed down to mono? No way. So, but anyway, he doesn't have a stereo <laughs> voice. <laughs> he has a mono voice. So I wanted to ask you now about recording. 
when you're okay okay so when you're setting up like the the microphone into the mixer do you how did you get your sound did you like mess with the eq and record it and go go upstairs listen to it on a boom box and hear it and then come back and tweak <laughs> the eq did you how'd you do that yeah well that's how i would do music maybe listen to it through the small speaker and see how it sounds right but uh, no not really i mean i mean yes and and no I mean, it wasn't that that thought out basically i uh wanted the strongest signal that i could get and i used to come in a little bit hot but i talked to one of my engineering buddies and it's different if i talk to a radio engineer or a music engineer about how hot i, I wanted the signal in mm. and uh, minus 12 to minus 6 just because you want to have somewhere to go mm. i used to go uh, in between minus 6 and 0 and it was great sounding to me because, in my opinion, louder sounds better. And I think a lot of people feel that way. But I wanted to be able to have some of those dynamics. And um, I don't know if that answers your question. I just basically uh, crank the gain up and then start working with the levels on individuals. And the only time I really mess with that is if I've got a guest in here. Right. Okay. Yeah, the reason the higher level usually sounds better is because when you record at a hotter level, you're actually taking advantage of the the digital resolution like the encoding of the signal is a higher resolution if your level is louder right so i don't know if that makes sense right. <laughs> well it, it does but it's, it's funny you say that because the last engineer i was talking about he was talking about you know with digital that you really have you, you for whatever reason you, you can get a lower a, a lower signal on the on the tape if you will and still be able to work with it so it gives you a little bit more flexibility than the, than the analog. And uh, I, I don't know about that. I, I just know that minus 12 to minus 6, I, I've seen a lot of guys on like podcast forums on Facebook or something, when they show like an Audacity audio with a wave file or what, whatever it is yeah, the that wave you're on the screen you're recording. Yeah, the wave on the screen. Like you see a lot of red and, and the red is, is clipping. And I'm like, damn, you're just clipping all the time. <laughs> And I, I don't know if it's the, the uh, gate and the compression that I'm putting in, but, you know, minus 6 to minus 12, it, it's a hot enough signal that people are going to be able to hear you. It's not going to be too low. They'll be able to hear it in the car, especially after Auphonic, but it's not going to be clipping. Right. So I'm curious, the, the different uh, advice or ideas you got from a, a radio engineer as opposed to a music engineer, what was the difference? Radio, we do compression beforehand. We do it like I'm doing it. Take it from the mixer into the insert, as you call it, and take it back out and put it on tape. So your your signal, uh, actually, it's uh, being modified before it gets recorded. Music engineers, they want just like a dry, right? a dry recording on the tape or whatever, hard disk. Yep. I, I call it tape still. I still call so, it tape too, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just just <laughs> we. I, I realize that it's it's not real tape, and I'm not a dinosaur <laughs> quite yet. Right, but yeah, they uh, they do their uh, their post processing uh, via via software. A lot of them, right. So, and and I suppose I do too with with Auphonic, But I'm talking everything. Just do it dry. Do it dry. We'll fix it in the mix. That's the whole thing. We got a joke here in Nashville. I said, oh boys, don't worry about tuning that guitar. Studio time's expensive. We'll just fix it in post production. Oh, and I think. Yeah, that's funny. Everybody has that attitude. Like, we'll just fix it in the mix, and, and I'm trying to do the best that I can. And that's one of the reasons I actually edit my show is because I'm trying to be a better host. I don't want to just pass this stuff off to people. I want to get better so there has to be less editing to get it out. Right. It's funny, that difference, you know, compressing to tape in the broadcasting world as opposed to music where everything just goes, you know, completely flat and dry to tape. Um, yeah. But I will say... I think that comes from the, the live broadcasting that radio was doing at one time. Now, everything right now is voice tracked, and right. you can manipulate it. But we, we didn't have that luxury. It used to be all live. So, And I also think it has to do with the fact that in radio, it's a human voice. Because I've done you know a million vocal sessions with singers, and we always compress a little bit to tape on a vocalist, like on a lead right. vocal or background vocals. I mean, you can add right. a little compression... You don't you don't crush it, but you can add compression to tape because it's a voice. I don't know what it is. Voices, you know what it is. There's so much dynamic range in a voice that compressing to tape is is fine. It really is. 
Well, that's the way I understand how compression works, and you can correct me on this, but you talk about the dynamic range, and am I right about this? The compression kind of uh, gets it a little more like tighter there in the middle of the of the line that you're looking at? Yeah, it, it just takes the highs and squashes them down a little, and it cu- kind of brings up the lows as well with the makeup gain. So, yeah, you're... Which is probably how people are listening to podcasts mostly from a podcasting standpoint. I mean, you're in your car... I mean, radio is certainly compressed. You're with these little tiny uh, white headphones that you get from Apple. <laughs> so it's not like we're listening on some kind of supersonic, you know, whatever the top level headphones are, where we can hear all the range. Right. And that that's one thing. That's why I master my all my episodes, um, you know, with a compression and a little bit of limiting. Because, you know, like if any... When you do music and you know your song is going to be on the radio, the radio station limits it and you know limits it a lot. Right. But a podcast, right. you're not getting that. So I've had this trouble driving. I, I one time I drove from Vegas to Colorado to look for houses. I was at a New Media Expo last year in Vegas, and anyway, I'm we were looking for houses in Colorado, which is where we live now. So I drove from Vegas to Colorado and I'm driving across Utah. The speed limit's 85 miles an hour. And I'm trying to listen to podcasts and a lot of them, they just weren't tight enough, compressed or limited enough. So right. you can hear it over the road noise. It just, half of it got lost. Right. And then you got to crank it up. And then when someone laughs or someone says something loud, it just tears your head off. <laughs> too loud yeah. it's too loud it's like yeah it's, it's it's not a place for dynamic range i mean maybe some podcasts are not what i do what i'm doing doesn't have that kind of emotion i'm not telling a story that it's going to make you cry one minute and then laugh <laughs> the next it's usually just business information and i i would assume that there would be a, a place for that but it's not you know are you there oh well we're not going to leave him a message we're going to try and call him back Cross your fingers. <laughs> Dude, I'm having technical issues. I apologize. <laughs> I just, I asked you a question and I didn't hear anything. And then I hear, and I was like, ooh. <laughs> There's like a backhoe next to your house, dude, digging the, in the yeah, lawn. The, man, look. And here's the irony about it is they're putting in Google Fiber in the front. Huh. And which I'm excited about, right? Right. But it hasn't been without problems. And, they got AT&T in the back in the alley and then I'm with Comcast and that somehow gets knocked out. That's coming in from overhead. So oh. it's um, it's a crazy day for internet <laughs> connectivity and, and phone. Right. You're still rolling though on your end, right? I'm rolling. I, I left it rolling. Yeah. Yeah, me I'm too. Glad, uh, I don't know if you got me back, so we're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So I wanted to ask you, do you uh, interview people over Skype or the internet at, at any time? I do. Uh, Skype is how we do internet okay. interviews. But with with that said, I, I try not to do interviews, and that's more of, of the format of the podcast than anything else. But yeah, I, I found Skype to be, if you've got to go remote, as long as the guy's got a good mic, and that can be even just like a direct-in USB mic, I, I feel that it, it sounds pretty amazing. Because in radio, we use ISDN. Right. And that's usually cool because somebody's got a nice setup on their end. But Skype, you know, if you had a nice setup, I think that would be equal to ISDN. Yeah, I I use this other one called Source Connect Now, which is the instructions I sent to you. Um, that's how we were going to connect. And you were like, oh, I, you, you might be overestimating my technical abilities. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's easy. Yeah. It's just a, it's an, it's like a audio connection, even simpler than Skype, but it actually sounds a lot better. And no one yeah. knows about it. No podcasters know about it yet. <laughs> well, there used to be something called Gizmo. And I don't know if you remember that. That was going to be the thing that competed against Skype. I think Gizmo was probably better, but Skype had more users. And Gizmo right. was by the guy from mp3.com, if you remember that site. Big music site. Right. Made a lot of money during the dot-com years. And yeah, sometimes those things uh, those things work and uh, sometimes they don't. But, but I think Skype is really pretty solid. If you've got a great mic, I, I've been... I was, I've been blown away. The first time I ever heard it, I, I thought it was incredible. And I think it's been great for podcasting. Hopefully we'll be able to still record those as easily as we have been. I know they're talking about changing the API and changing some of the, the bells and whistles on Skype, but it's been super powerful. I think it's helped to grow podcasting. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's because it's cheap. It's free. Everybody, I mean, it's free. Everybody has it. Um, the one, I, one thing about Skype though, is if someone's on Wi-Fi, 
it really messes with the it, it can mess with the audio a lot and then it does that ducking thing which i i don't like yeah but if someone's in a in a studio or or maybe not even in a studio if someone has a real microphone and their computer is hardwired to the internet skype you know is fine so how do you bring them in though because you're you're do you're recording on your dell pc how are you bringing them in on skype well i, I haven't done that in the red room because, oh, okay. like I said, we we rarely do interviews. Usually, if I'm going to go through Skype, I just h- hook direct in, uh, directly in, and and uh, I, I've got the setup for the mix minus and to hook that up. But I'm probably gonna have to get an engineer over here to do it for me. I mean, I, I mean, I could probably figure it out, but it would it would take you know two or three days. I got to do it in <laughs> like ten minutes, right? Two or three days of a lot of yelling and screaming and gnashing yeah, a lot of, of headache <laughs> yeah i mean i really don't i'm looking at all these knobs on my mixer and this mixer is not that big it's uh i think it's 12 channels or maybe 10 or 8 who knows i don't even know and yeah you know, it's 12 it's actually the 12 o- yeah it's the 1202 vlz4 i have that one actually that oh, was yeah. that's my old one but i still have it it's a good mixer mackie's pretty good it's pretty clean you know one well, new Mac- Mackie from the music industry, which is how I ended up with a, a Maxi or Ma- Mackie. They used to say "Made on a Mackie." I don't know if you remember that slogan they used no. to have. I was like, well, you know, it, it, it's metal. There have been some records that are made on these things. If I drop it, it's not going to break. Some of these mixers are so cheap, and they're going into the, uh, I, I guess, the consumer market. They're not really like pro mixers. So I wanted something that's a little bit better than most, but not as good as some of the guys that I know. And I think that this was the cheapest one and, and the least complicated one with, with the insert. And, and that's really what I wanted because I wanted to be able to put the gate on it and put the compression on it. I knew that was what was going to give me the sound that I wanted. Right. Now, your intro and outro, you had them pre-produced. Did you produce them yourself or did you farm it out? Well, I mean, I produced them myself in uh, hiring like a voiceover guy. Okay. And uh, the, the the music, you know, the music is, is, is what I've done for the last 20 years and, and film and TV licensing and that whole bit. So uh, yeah, I, f- I found some music. I found a guy with a voice that I wanted and we've used guys, if you want to get a good voice, I mean, uh, Fiverr is great. Sometimes it's hit or miss, voice123.com, better. That's the the more pro guys. And right. just, yeah, find somebody, you, you kind of direct them and let them know how you want to, uh, you know, how you want it to sound, go back and forth a few times and there you go. Right. So what's the most challenging part of the production for you personally? I think the time to edit that it takes is, is tough, but, but it's, it's all challenging in a way. I mean, you've got to plan, you know, I walk in. I don't just walk in with just an idea in my head. I've, I've got to look up the information and have some bullet points and be in a good mood, being in a good space. Like there are times when I'm in you know, recording or trying to record an episode, it's just not coming through and just being able to walk away and come back to it when I'm a a bit more fresh, maybe. That's what I found. But I think that there are a lot of little things that can happen, but I think you have to be, you know, fully present. And I think you have to be excited about it. And I think you have to be able to put in the time and not be tired. And in some ways it's all a challenge, but it it also, that can be a good thing. I mean, I, I like the challenge of it, being able to put the beginning, the middle and the end and then to try to make it sound the best that I can. Right. So how Does about that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. So how about uh, EQ and compression? I mean, I know you probably use a little bit of it, but did you ever really get into that and learn it and and really? I don't know a thing about it. <laughs> really? I okay. I, de- definitely, EQ is just flat. Everything on the <laughs> EQ is flat, and the compression is just what I asked a guy that I knew in in, in radio. As a matter of fact, I don't even know that I even, I mean, I asked him, but then I looked at the settings that we have at the station where I record my broadcast show. Oh. And I was like, yeah, well, it's good enough for the broadcast. It's good enough for me. (laughs) (laughs) That's cool. And it's funny, the ATR 2100 microphone, um, one of my previous co-hosts got one and that one, I don't know, they tweaked it inside the mic somehow. It, it sounds pretty good with flat. I mean, there's not really much you have to do to that. It adds some high end, which, you know, depending on how clean your mic pre's are, can be really nice or, you know, eh. But uh, yeah, you, you can kind of run that one flat. What is your broadcast show? Tell me about that show. Broadcast show is called Music Business Radio. And it's a partnership between me, my company, musicmarketing.com, and Tuned In Broadcasting. 
which when we started, they had a cluster of stations in the Southeast. They're primarily known for a station, WRLT 100.1 in Nashville. And been doing it since, I guess, 2005. So a little over 10 years. Wow. And go down and talk to music business people, record label presidents, artists, songwriters. And uh, that show has an engineer and that show has a, we used to have a separate guy editing, but uh, the engineer, the new engineer edits as well. And uh, I pretty much am just the host, just the, the guy, you know? Okay. Oh, that's awesome. So this is really interesting because you came from the music business, but from the marketing side and, you know, you kind of learned some audio, but you, you know, you're not, you, you don't claim to be an engineer or anything like that. Um, no. So coming from that side of it and learning a little bit of the engineering, what advice would you have for someone else who is maybe entering podcasting or maybe, maybe they already are podcasting, but that they're, they're kind of lacking in engineering skills. What, what advice would you give to them? I, I think it's worth it to learn some basics and the basics are the things that I know plug a mic in a mixer, get good levels. If you want to put something like a gate, it's going to keep you from breathing too hard. You know, learn a little bit of mic technique. I think the basic stuff is good, but I, I think that people can go way too deep on engineering. And I don't know if engineers have this saying, but uh, guitarists certainly do. We, we call it guitar porn, where like, oh man, that guitar is so cool. And I've seen engineers, I guess, do certain things where they're like, oh man, I sure wish I had this thing. It's got a bunch of blinky lights and knobs and they keep adding equipment. Right. And I think that uh, new podcasters can get really caught up in that. I, I think that if you have a basic set, and I'm not talking about just, uh, you know, don't don't just plug straight into the computer. You know, get you a, a basic mixer and learn some some basic engineering to get something good on tape. Because the, the better it goes in, the easier it is for you to work with. Like some people I, I hear them doing, especially the webcam shows, just using like their, their computer audio and your computer microphone or, or doing things from like a Starbucks and doing interviews from <laughs> a Starbucks. Don't do that I and mean, do it a little bit better than that. Uh, but, but I would say just if you have the basics, I, then I would say focus on your hosting. It's not even engineering thing. People get way caught up in the engineer when, uh, or the engineering elements when they, they, don't, they don't even have the hosting skills because it's not really about all engineering, it's, hosting is much more important, in my opinion. Right. But you, with that said, you need the basic engineering skills, absolutely. Right. So you mentioned levels, getting good levels. And that is like, I mean, if there's a fundamental <laughs> in audio engineering, it's levels, right? Getting the right levels at yeah. different parts of the, the gain staging. Did you understand getting good levels from the beginning or did you, someone teach you? Well, my degree is in music specifically commercial music. And I've also grown up in my first recording session, I was five years old. So cool. I've spent a lot of time in the studios over the years. And I wouldn't say that I'm an engineer, but it's like, I've been around it. It's like that guy who's been around the, the auto mechanic shop, right? He's going right. to know a little something about cars just by osmosis, just by hanging out there. So I, I probably take for granted what I know and, and maybe the importance of levels is one of those kind of things, right. but that's about the extent of it. Like, Hey, let's get some good levels. Let's get that level. That's the first thing you do when you sit down with a musician. Let's get your levels. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, this has been insightful. I'm really glad you could come on the show. I think again, someone like you coming from a background that's not super technical, but really jumping in and just getting it done. Like you said, having a basic setup, having a good setup and not getting st caught up in the weeds, get too technical, just having a good sound. Right. That really helps. I think that helps everybody. Um, well, don't let it stop you from doing it. I think that's another way that people make an excuse of not having a podcast, which is, oh, I don't know enough yet about engineering or I don't have this piece of equipment. I just, strangely enough, finished a book or finished the first draft, the manuscript about podcasting. And my advice was, you know, if you want to do a podcast, you better start podcasting and you don't have to release it, but you could do that on your phone. And then save up, get the equipment. Don't release the crap that you're recording, but you can get the hosting stuff up. And, and I, I feel like it's, it's easier to learn the technical side than it is the hosting. So the, the, the technical side will, will come together for you as long as you're willing to invest. And you can't do it on a, you know, the white mic that comes with your iPhone. <laughs> I've actually had, people try. Yeah, I've had people join shows as a guest recently. In fact, this over the past month, this has happened so many times. 
they literally they have their Mac and they're plugging their earbuds into the computer and that's how they're hearing and that's how, and the and the mic on the earbuds is the one they're using to be on the show. Yeah. And it's funny, I always yeah. have to tell them like could you, you know, cuz the mic will rest against their shirt and it'll rub against their shirt as they move right. around. Yeah. And I'm like, "Hey, could you just hold it out like a couple inches? I know you're going to have to sit there and hold it with your hand the whole show, <laughs> but honestly, if it rubs the whole time, it that's unusable yeah. audio. You can't use that. It's distracting and it's tough to edit. And I, I think that that's probably good audio advice from like a podcast guest perspective is you need to know what you sound like when you're talking to somebody on a podcast. So even if you don't have a podcast, if you're just a guest, you need to know what that ambient noise or even more than ambient noise at your Starbucks sounds like. Don't do your <laughs> interview from Starbucks. Don't do it from the beach where the wind is blowing. Don't do it where it's rubbing. There's a lot of, there's a lot of don'ts. But it's pretty simple. Find a quiet room, get a good mic. Talked about levels, get a good level, done. And, yeah. you know, I think Skype is auto leveled, isn't it? I mean, you just plug right in and Skype will give you. It's, it's, it's not that hard to do via Skype. Yeah, Skype does the auto level thing, auto level thing. You can actually turn it off as well, but yeah, but that's very handy. The auto level is very handy. Yeah. And Skype even does that ducking thing where it actually cuts out the echo and any, you know, it'll help cut out all the echo and background noise. The downside of that is sometimes if two people talk at the same time, it'll duck your voice. Right. <laughs> and, right. And, and you can't hear like one or two words. Which well, is and weird. I think that's another one which is, as list of things to do if you're doing podcasts. Um, I, I'm listening to you on headphones right now, which is not coming through the microphone. If I were listening to you on a speaker, that would be coming through the microphone in addition to my voice, which just creates an editing nightmare. So right. that would be another one. Totally. Well, this has been great. David Hooper, host of Red Podcast. And what's your broadcast show again called? Broadcast show is called Music Business Radio. That's musicbusinessradio.com if you're a musician and want to learn more about how to make money in the music business. That's awesome. And the redpodcast.com is the site for your podcast. And again, I suggest you go there because there's a little tab called Equipment I Use, and it's pretty cool. You got some nice pictures. It's, that's the red room, right? With the red foam and the black yeah. foam. That is the red room. Yep. And a, even the microphone has a red foam pop filter on it. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah, we had to fully commit. Fully commit. <laughs> that is pretty cool. So, D David, thank you so much for being on the Podcast Engineering Show. Yeah, thanks. It's been fun. Yeah, this has been fun. And like I said on the intro of the show, if you listen to this show, like David was just saying, he grew up in the studios, so he knows how to get levels. He knows levels are important. That's the first thing you do. Well, if you listen to every week of this podcast, this knowledge, this audio knowledge and skills and techniques are just going to seep into your brain and it'll definitely help you on so many levels. You know, you'll be in a studio one day and there'll be a problem and you'll be like, hey, I know what to do and you'll fix it. Uh, I, I really think that's true. So I'm happy you could listen. Again, this show is brought to you by the Podcast Engineering School and the website is podcastengineeringschool.com. And Barry, do you think this was a, a good one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, he... I, there is a no. He does say no. So that means something that he said yes. So I hope you can join me next time. And um, we'll listen to this song again on the outro, Distance Between Two Points. And I do have permission from this band to play this song, David. <laughs> they gave me permission. So thanks again for listening, everybody. I hope... Uh, and by the way, comment on this post and send me emails with your show. I want to hear your show, The Sound Qualities. So until next episode, as always, sound great. See y'all.